Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani uh, and I welcome you in this uh, daily PIV analysis video. In the morning, the Hindu editorial videos come. In the evening, these PDI, PIV videos, they come. And both in Hindi and English uh, language, these videos come. And importantly, uh, there are uh, separate data sets and uh, separate MCQs and their explanations. And these days, the update on the PIV website is very less. And uh, elections are going on, model code of conduct is also going on. So no schemes are uh, being launched these days. So I have uh, moved uh, more towards these MCQs and I'm giving you uh, the explanation in much detail so that these things are going to be very, very important for you in the prelims examination. It is going to be a good help here. So the compilation is very important and these lessons are uh, becoming much more important than they ever were. And uh, 30th March, it is there. This March, uh, this month is uh, uh, ended now. And uh, now. Uh, the 60% off is going on on the pendrive courses of study IQ. So if you are interested, you can uh, uh, get them and 31st March is the last date uh, till when this 60% uh, off would go on. And now the question was regarding the biosphere reserves. As we all know, these are protected areas, national parks, biosphere reserves, wildlife sanctuaries. We all uh, hear about them and you see environment section in the UPSC is very, very important. 20 to 25 questions they are a norm because the forest service prelims examination is also uh, is same and as the civil service prelims examination and the forest service prelims they both are uh, uh, they both are uh, one exam so 20 to 25 questions are coming from this particular section and the questions are very specific they are uh, set in a pattern all these uh, international organization all these uh, uh, environmental initiatives the environmental governance issues and uh, important uh, uh, rulings national and international rulings and all these bodies on the and the protection these are the uh, highly focused areas and you see we have many many plans so learn about everything the syllabus is short and around 20 to 25 questions means 40 to 50 marks in the prelims examination Nothing can be bigger than that in prelims examination. I'm, I'm telling you uh, where uh, race is so tough and uh, for a single mark, uh, hundreds of students, they fight there. So 40 to 50 marks is a kind of a greatest deal in UPSC. So environment section is the most important section, shortest syllabus, maximum questions. So that is why it is very, very important. In India, there are 18 uh, uh, biosphere reserves and out of these 18 uh, reserves, 11 are recognized under the UNESCO's Man and Biosphere program. Okay, it was started in 1971 and there is a world network of biosphere reserve under it. And 11 uh, of our biosphere reserves, they come under this particular uh, network. So Nilgiri would come under it, Nokrek of uh, Meghalaya would come under it and Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve, that would come under it. Biodiversity hotspots are there in this world and in India, Western Ghat region and the Eastern Himalaya and the Indochina region and the Andaman Nicobar is also under it. So these two important regions in India, they are uh, uh, under the list of uh, biodiversity hotspots. And here you see in this area, there are many national parks, there are many biosphere reserves and this uh, great Nicobar biosphere reserve is also a part of it. And you see, there can be national parks under these biosphere reserves. So there is, uh, this is uh, not something like that, that national parks are different and uh, biosphere reserves are different or these wildlife sanctuaries are different. They may be a contiguous area. Okay, so 135 is the correct option here uh, as B it is. And it is the list of these 11 biosphere reserves. Okay, these all are important. And uh, Agastya Malai was the latest one in 2016. Sorry, uh, the Kanchanjunga, uh, which got it its status in 2018 and Agastya Malai in 16. So these are very important and Great Nicobar got it in 2013. So these are the latest ones and UNESCO's program. Okay. So the uh, thing would be important as education for these uh, important areas. Awareness aspect is very important because it is a UNESCO's program, men and biosphere. So science for sustainability support sites as they are calling it. Uh, I'm talking about the biosphere reserves. They are calling them science for sustainability support sites and their status is internationally recognized and they put some uh, particular uh, characteristics to these areas. You see in the central part there is core area after that uh, uh, outside it there is a buffer zone and 
there are some transition zones so transitional area is the outermost one and you see all are important protection of all these areas uh, are uh, very much crucial for uh, maintaining the biodiversity and maintaining the uh, particular ecosystem balance because protection is uh, based uh, on the adjoining areas also not only on the core areas so these are three interrelated zones with the biosphere reserves okay and as i told you they are somewhat different from these national parks and the wildlife sanctuaries and there can be terrestrial uh, biosphere reserves marine biosphere reserves and coastal ecosystems can also be there okay so there is no bar on that and this program map program was launched in 1971 intergovernmental scientific program as we call it and there are 686 sites in 122 countries right now so it's a huge network and 20 transboundary sites are also there means they are spread in more than one countries and uh, world network of biosphere reserve wnbr they may ask you uh, they may put uh, abbreviation of it wnbr also okay and identify and assess the changes in biosphere resulting from human and natural activities and effect of these changes on humans and environment in particular in the context of climate change so this is something as a core area they are working on and human welfare livable environment you see these are the basic rights and they are supporting them by taking care of these bio biosphere reserves so they are important and there is uh, is an uh, there's a MAB ICC that is International Coordinating Council that is the main body that decides about all these things and it decides about the agenda of MAB program and it takes care about the working of uh, uh, this particular body of uh, MAB and you see how they work the participating countries they would establish MAB national committees in their respective countries and this committee would work there it would report about these uh, important uh, uh, identified sites and the whole uh, data would reach up to MAB program and the headquarters is there in Paris headquarters in Paris and UNESCO the division of ecological earth and earth sciences this particular uh, office is there in Paris and there only this particular secretary is located okay and last world congress on biosphere reserve that took place in Lima and this is the capital of Peru. Peru is country in South America. Okay, and, and it was there in March 16 means three years back and uh, in this particular uh, fourth uh, World Congress of Biosphere Reserve, they decided about the vision for 2016 to 2025 year. It's a decade and uh, uh, for this decade they decided that how they are going to manage these particular sites, what are going to be the rulings, what are our aims and the whole agenda is totally in line with the sustainable development goals. Okay, so this uh, detailed information was necessary for the biosphere reserve because many many questions they have appeared regarding them. Ilkal Sadi is, in, uh, is, is famous in Karnataka. Ilkal is a place in northern Karnataka in Bagalkot district and in Belara district also they uh, manufacture these uh, sarees cotton and silk two things are used in this and it, ha it has got the geographical identification and you know the whole process of uh, gi tag that comes under the wto's ipr section so that's important we have a particular uh, law regarding that and gi tag and other important uh, uh, sarees which are famous in the state of odisha is bonkai panchampali is andhra pradesh and chanderi in madhya pradesh two questions has been asked regarding that Jawara, it's a harvest uh, festivals dance and it is there in Madhya Pradesh. Jawar is the uh, a particular crop and if that crop that uh, uh, product is uh, harvesting is very very good then uh, in the Bundelkhand region mainly in the northern um, Madhya Pradesh this is it is celebrated. So Jawar dance, Jawar is the crop so uh, the, the name of it so you can remember that harvest dance. Other important dance forms which are also folk dance, Ras Lila, Dadra, uh, these are for Uttar Pradesh and in Goa, Tarangamal. Next, Pema Yangtze Monastery, it is located in Sikkim. Many questions they have appeared in the prelims examination regarding these monasteries. In Himachal Pradesh, the most famous one is the Tabu Monastery which uh, is also famous for the Lai Lama issue and all. It's in Sikkim, Pema Yangtze and Rumtek. Rumtek is again very famous. Bomdila in, uh, in Arunachal Pradesh and Namdroling is in southern part of India in Karnataka. So these are a famous one. Gafa tags. You see Gafa uh, name comes from uh, uh, these uh, big tech giants. Google, Amazon, Facebook and uh, Apple companies. And France decided to 
impose a particular tax that is that would be called a GAFA tax on these companies because they're these are virtual uh, tech platforms and they take advantage of many many loopholes and because of that what actually happens uh, the fair share is uh, uh, not collected according to the their laws according to the European Union laws so France is now going to impose a, a very important tax on these tech giants and you see similarly we have also imposed some regulations on e-commerce giants and these are also American companies Amazon and Walmart because Walmart has uh, uh, bought uh, Flipkart here so these two are, are very important and now when we are imposing regulations then again uh, these companies they are uh, under much stress because you see their business is uh, rising multifolds and they are earning fortunes on these uh, platform because whole world is on internet and these uh, companies they are running many many businesses there and they are supporting these businesses so they are earning much so the tax collection would be important here so the uh, answer would be c here okay you can see here google facebook apple and amazon gafa tax and these firms avoid uh, paying what is considered as a fair share of taxes that is the argument given by france country and it is uh, estimated that they are gonna earn 500 million euro uh, by taxing these companies next data is from ministry of defense combat management system cms for indigenous aircraft career through private sector you see the importance of private sector is rising in all kinds of defense manufacturing here this combat management system is actually uh, uh, uh manufactured uh, by a, a particular private company that is ms startup power strategic engineering division tpsd and it had collaborated uh, with the other uh, foreign uh, manufacturing companies now see the system is for the aircraft carriers which are having maximum importance and uh, when the wars uh, are being fought then aircraft carriers are the most important tools there in the oceans and you see to Indian Navy these has been uh, given and uh, these are within time so the performance is very good uh, by the private sector so this uh, particular uh, allowance that is be being given to these uh, private sector entities that is much more important and the Make in India initiative is also encouraged here by these newly allowed manufacturing by private sector so this is important next data is uh, uh, regarding uh, what is the problem here UN Council passes a resolution to combat terrorist financing. Regarding terrorist financing, we have heard about the FATF that is working for uh, terror financing and money laundering issues. This is uh, by United Nations and the Security Council, it has unanimously passed the first ever resolution ordering members to enforce laws against terror financing. If any country is not going to uh, make laws and not going to enforce these laws against these uh, financiers, then certainly uh, some actions would be taken here because it is regarding the demand of domestic laws okay and uh, this is against the serious criminal offenses like terrorism and uh, terror financing so these are of much importance today and you see after this Christchurch incident again this uh, debate is rising that terror financing is the basis of these terror activities so why terror financiers financiers are there and why some countries are supporting terror activities so there must be strong laws against that it's a critical time now next regarding the delhi horse show it is the country's largest most prestigious and popular horse show and you see it is happening in delhi this particular horse show used to be there in 20th century also and after independence the tradition continued and it remained india's premier horse show the biggest one as i told you it was discontinued for seven years from 79 to 86 then again it was revived by president's estate polo club you see uh, polo is a very important game invented by indians and uh, that was spread to whole world and that was again related to horses so our interest with horses and our horse riding issues they are very very old thousands of years old and uh, this time we have won many medals so this is uh, showing us that uh, our interest is rising in these competitions and now this is the premier show next these are the mcqs try their additional uh, datas uh, and additional informations apart from their answers in the comment section 
PDF you will get uh, on this uh, telegram channel that link is given on this Facebook group send me a request I would approve and that's all for now tomorrow is Sunday so it will be uh, an off and uh, thanks a lot keep watching Prasam Sani and we'll meet again on Monday